Okay, so how do you emit particles from textures in Moto 701? You might be asking yourself. Uh, so it's not very obvious, but it's very doable and it's probably going to be easier in the future. But one of the things about doing it this way is you'll get a better understanding of how Moto's particle system works and how you can sort of chain together various emitters and, and uh, particle systems together to get the effect that you're looking for. So, so ultimately what I want to do here is just emit particles from the white and not the black uh, of this uh, just this checker texture that I have on the plane here. Um, so you might be thinking to yourself, well, here I am in the setup tab and in the you know, particles over here. If I choose a surface emitter, that'll let me choose a source, a mesh source. So if I choose the plane and hit simulate, I can see particles coming out of the plane there. And you know, you would be barking up the right tree, but in Moto 701, there's no way to texture that emission in the surface emitter, okay? So the surface emitter, whoops, let me go to the uh, item list here. The surface emitter um, is not what we want. So if we stop the simulation here, I'm just going to delete the surface emitter. And I'm going to actually show you one other type of emitter. It's called a source emitter. A source emitter is, is, is interesting and it can do all kinds of things. But one of the things you'll notice right off the bat when you pick a source, not only can you pick a piece of geometry here, but you also notice that there's a particle simulation source. We'll kind of get back to that in a minute. But if I pick the plane and hit simulate, you'll notice that I'm just simulating from the vertices here. Let me slow that down a tad. So you'll see that the source emitter, it can't emit from geometry, but it just emits at the vertices. So it's using those vertices as a particle source for the uh, emission in this particle simulation. So that's um, interesting, but it's not what we want either. However, that's something that we can use. So I'm going to keep that there for now. And then we're going to go back in time a little bit to Moto 601. If you remember in Moto 601, there was a surface particle generator. So if I go over here to add item and go down to particles and point clouds, you'll see the surface particle generator. And let me select that real quick. Now we use this in 601 to create a static particle cloud on a mesh. And so if I pick my surface here, I can pick the plane and you'll see the little orange dots there. And they're actually, let me get rid of the texture. Um, you'll see they're all over the plane there. Uh, and so we use this for uh, things like landscape generating. If you want to put trees on a landscape or rocks or something like that, it's a great way to do that. Um, let me actually just add a, replica a replicator to this real quick. And uh, actually in 7.1 it's kind of cool. You can use the schematic for replicators. So I can take my surface particle generator down there in the schematic and hook it up to a particle source. And then I can also, uh, I've got this little cube here I can use as a prototype. What's cool is you can see there's a drop down so you can get multiple prototypes in there if you want. But here you can at least see, get a better idea of where that um, surface particle generator is putting particles. If I want to up the density by lowering the average spacing, I can do that. Uh, let's just cut it down. So now it's a lot more dense. Not quite that bad, but so one of the things I can do in 701 with the surface particle generator that I can't do to these other emitters is add an item mask. You right click and you can see item mask down there. But if I right click on say the source emitter, I've got no item mask. So if you right click and create an item mask, we're actually going to use that. Go over to our shading tree to isolate that particle generation of the surface particle generator generator to the checker material. So here in the effects section, I have an item mask on that surface particle generator, right? And here's my checker texture. So if I duplicate this guy and drag it in there, and then right click and change the effect from fall off to particle density. And there you go, it's using that. Let me go back to my checker view. It's using that particle den that texture to define the particle density of my surface particle generator, right? So again, this is the type of thing you use all the time for landscapes where I'll just paint a weight map or use a texture to put trees or rocks where I want them. But what we're going to do is use this particle system, the surface particle generator, to drive a, dyna a dynamic particle system. So if I right click and clear out my schematic here, I'm going to drag in my good old source emitter, which is still hooked up to my particle simulation. And for an emission source, I'm going to use my surface particle generator. Okay, so if I plug that in and hit simulate, you'll see that the particles, let me speed them up here a little bit, 
are now just coming, let me go to a shaded view, the particles are just simulating from uh, that textured area. And we turn off our replicator. Um, so that's what we want. We want to use the surface particle generator, which is textured, to feed that into a source emitter and you're driving that emission into this particle simulation. So that's how you use textures um, to drive uh, emission in Moto 701. Now one of the things you can do is, is just really quickly, just to show you some more features, um, let's say I want them all just to go up. And here they're just sort of randomly spreading out with my initial velocity and velocity spread. Let's say I just want these guys to shoot up. I can use a particle operator for that. So if I have my source emitter selected here, you don't need it selected actually, but if I if I go in and, and create a, a particle operator and it creates a locator there for that, you don't need to see it so you can hide it. Drag this here, you can see that that's feeding into the particle simulation, okay? And with my particle operator selected, I can grab a feature from this particle system um, and either read uh, values of that feature or write them. So if I go to add feature and I want to click add to schematic, I can go down and say velocity, okay? And hit OK, and you'll see I've got velocity XYZ values on my particle operator right now. And so one of the things you have to keep in mind is these purple lines right here, that's not just a information flow from left to right. That's a bi-directional information flow. So this particle operator can write values to the simulation. You can also read values from the simulation using this uh, link here. So one of the things with the particle operator is it, it's used to either get values or send values to the particle simulation. It doesn't want, it doesn't let you assign values to these channels yourself. I can go here and I can double click, I can enter in a velocity of meters per second, but it's not gonna do anything for me. What I have to do is drive this input here with a value. So one of the easiest ways to do that is just add a user channel, right, to this node here. I can add a user channel, we'll just call it uh, Greg Velocity. Give it your username and give it whatever you want and with spaces or whatever. And when you hit o, hit OK, we want to float and scalar. Um, when you hit OK, it, it's it's going to, I can just tab it. So you notice it's taking the space out. That channel name, the channel name doesn't like spaces or special characters, so it just does that for you automatically. And you see I've got it right down here. And I can enter a value into this. I can double click it or if I want, it's over here on the assembly tab. Let's say enter five. And then I could just take that output and feed it over here into the velocity y input and that is going to be sent to the particle simulation. So now when I simulate, you see that those particles, instead of just sort of milling about, are being shot up. Let me just uh, bring that down. You could also you know, use our C for our channel hall tool and bring that down a little bit. So that's kind of how a particle operator works. Um, and so obviously there's a lot more you can do with it, but one of the things I think people stumble on is they think of these purple lines as left to right value, you know, sending values from left to right. And really it's a, it's a think of it as a bi-directional communication highway. We're grabbing information, you know, information can flow both ways to these purple lines here. These white channel values, however, that's simply coming out of this, out of this side and into this side, okay? Um, so just let me do one other deal here. Let's say we want to kill these particles, uh, have them collide with another piece of geometry and, and have them die when they hit. So again, let me just uh, grab a grab another cube here. I like to keep my scenes organized. So one of actually the cool things is, um, let's call this killer cube. One of the things I like to do actually in, in 701 is group these guys. We'll just call this particle group. Spell it right, Greg. Horrible speller. Um, drag the replicator in there. And I like to use the new uh, uh, itemless colors. You know, I like to make my particles green, make that group green. I can make, um, you know, I like to make my, put my lights in a group and make it yellow, make my put meshes in a group, make it blue. And it just makes it easier to read. But I'm going on here, so if I want to bring this cube up here, I can make this a dynamic object. If I just hold shift and click the dynamic tab, it'll pop it out. And instead of going over to it, it's a nice little trick. And I can just uh, make that a passive rigid body. 
And you can see on the, it has a, uh, or actually, did I have that selected? Maybe I didn't. Make it a passive rigid body. There you go. So you can see the dynamic attributes here. It's a passive rigid body now. If I hit simulate, um, those particles are just going to go right through it. You may be wondering, why is it doing that? It's supposed to be an integrated dynamic system. Well, you have to tell uh, tell this particle simulation that you actually want these particles to collide with that. It's really easy. You just, um, you just add a dynamic collider. You'll see if I drag that in here, it already automatically hooks up. You know, the dynamic solver is actually hooked up to the uh, this collider is, is getting... Again, this is a bi-directional uh, information highway. So I'm getting information from the solver and telling the simulation uh, that there's dynamics going on. And if my killer cube is part of this system, it's also automatically hooked up to the solver. So now if I simulate, these particles should collide with the cube. And they are, except where they're kind of going over the edge there, which is easily remiable, if that's a word. And just Make that a little bigger, start the simulation over, and okay, so now they're hitting the cube there, and now I want to kill those when they hit the cube. So what I can do, let me just hit my, stop my simulation here. It's my particle operator. Let's go back to this guy, and let's just add another feature. So we'll click Add Feature, and you can add as many as you want. Um, I'm going to add a collision event, okay, and I'm going to add it to the schematic. So now I've got a collision event, and that's going to return a positive value if I, if, if that particle... Um, collides with something, it's going to say yes, it collides with something. And what I want to do is feed that yes, it just collided with something to yes for a kill. So now when it hits yes for collision, it's going to also yes kill it. So if I hit simulate here, when the particles hit that, they should die. And they're not. I actually knew that was going to happen, but what I want to, the reason I am showing you this is, is I want to show you that there's an order of operations going on inside this particle simulation. If I mouse that down and stop the simulation, you'll see that there's sort of a stack here. And like the other stacks in Moto, it evaluates from the bottom up, just like the shader tree, just like the de deformation stack. So the source emitter is evaluating, and then this particle operator is evaluating, and then this dynamic collider is evaluating. And the problem is, it's looking for a collision prior to knowing that the, a collision is happening. This dynamic collider is telling it, the simulation, that a collision is happening but it's telling it that after we're searching for it with the particle operator. So what you want to do is actually move the dynamic collider above the particle operator. Oh, I'm sorry. Again, <laughs> you want to move it below the particle operator because if you move it above, it's not going to, you're going to have it just like we just did. So now it's below the particle operator. So simulation happens, source emitter happens on the simulation. It looks for dynamic collisions. Er, er, and then the particle operator searches for yes or no in those collisions. So if I hit simulate now, the collision will happen in the second step, and then it, uh, the operator will see that and kill the particle in the third step. So there you see they're being killed. So pretty cool, right? So that's emitting from a texture, and it's actually, let me just stop this. If I, you know, this uh, surface particle generator is, is also fairly flexible. I can um, hide my plane here and grab uh, a ball and if I change the surface to a ball and the material tag to let's say sphere top then I'm just getting of course I'm getting let me turn off this guy now I'm getting just particles on the top of that sphere and I can simulate that and that's another way where you can if you want to emit particles just from a particular um, material group, you could do it that way as well with a surface particle generator feeding into a source emitter and then you can do whatever you want with your particles and your particle simulation using particle operators or forces, whatever you want. I can throw a force on this. Uh, let's do a, like a wind or something. So it's a pretty robust particle system. And uh, there's a lot you could do with it, but a lot of things like particle emission off the bat isn't necessarily, there's my wind, isn't uh, texture, particle emission from textures isn't that obvious, but I think once you kind of go through this tutorial here, you'll get a better understanding of how this uh, particle system works and how you can feed different sy one particle system into another. And uh, there's something called a collector emitter 
which um, does a great job of that as well. And there's some other tutorials you'll see with collector emitters. And you might use a collector emitter for something where if you want a chain of particle events, like uh, you know, particles shoot off of something as sparks and they hit a ground and then create a new particle system as smaller sparks uh, pop off of those you know, collision points to the big sparks. And that's where you use something like a collector emitter and a source emitter to do something like that. So anyway, this is just scratching the surface, but I think it's uh, hopefully helpful.